Sorry, David. Okay, David, my bad. Um, you're gonna have to pause the video and check it out. There's the first few examples that I forgot to record, but now I am. So pause, 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 check it out, David. And now we're down here. All right, independent events are two or more events that have no effect on each other. Um, an example of that, an example of that would be like rolling a die and rolling another die. Um, people who gamble really like to say like if they haven't gotten like a six for a while, they'll be like, oh, I'm due for a six, but that's not true. Like your past roles have nothing to do with your current roles. Uh, dependent events are two or more events that do affect each other. So I already told you that rolling a die and rolling another die is independent. Can somebody tell me an example of two dependent events? It can just be real life or something with probability, your choice. Raise your hand if you can think of one. Right, well, it doesn't really work with dice, does it? But tell me another thing that it would work with because I like your idea of taking something out. Right, so like if you uh, draw a card, don't replace it back in the deck. And then draw another. Let's say you wanted to draw two aces in a row. Well, if you drew an ace the first time, then you'd have less aces in the deck. But also, even if you didn't draw an ace the second time, you would still have less cards in the deck. So it does change your probability no matter what. Krista, is there a snake or a lizard or a frog you'd like? You want to see him again? He's cute, isn't he? He's a little frog. You're welcome. All right, moving on. Example nine. Decide whether these are independent or dependent. All right, we're just going to go through these wicked fast. Selecting a king from a standard deck, not replacing it, selecting a queen from the deck. Those are dependent because you didn't replace it. Tossing a coin, getting a head, and then cost, tossing a six-sided die and obtaining a six. What do you think about that one? What? Dependent? Independent, don't affect each other. You were talking about not affecting each other, but you think you just said the wrong word. Driving over 85 miles per hour and getting into a car accident. What do you think, independent or dependent? Dependent. Not everybody who drives over 85 miles an hour is going to get into a car accident, but it probably ups your odds a little bit if you're going over 85 miles per hour. All right, so this is the multiplication rule, the and rule. And means that you multiply um, the probabilities. So this is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A happened.
For example, selecting a card and without replacing the first card from a standard deck, find the probability of selecting a king and then selecting a queen. Okay, so first we select a king. What's the probabilities of selecting a king? Just talk to me, guys. Four out of 52. And then what's the probability then of uh, selecting a queen? Right, four out of 51 because we have one less card in the deck. Which is the same thing as, <coughs> by the way, on the AP test, they always want you to round all of your probabilities to the third digit. Yeah, well, they like decimals or fractions, your choice. It has to be like a reduced fraction or a decimal to the third place. All right, how about B I'll give a prize for? I'll give you a second to work. I'm hoping at this point that 10B feels pretty easy for you. Would it have been easy for you before you took stats, do you think? Do you think you would have gotten it right? Yeah, the and you wouldn't have known. Okay. Uh, who wants to go for this one? Michaela's one. Mitchell's two. Krista, I'm not going to let you go again, but I will in a second. Two, Mitchell. Yep, one half. Mm -hmm. One twelve. That's the right answer. Good job. Perfect. Is everybody getting this? Like, we're good? Okay. All right. Number 11 for the rotator cuff surgery. Probability that the surgery is successful is 90%, 0.9. Find the probability that all three are successful in a row. All right, so it's like the first one successful, I'm gonna write first one down here, and the second one is successful, and the third one is successful. So that'd be 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. 0.9 to the third power, look at it come down out there. Look how snowy it is out there. Yeah, it's not going to be fun to drive home in. Yes, congratulations. It's very good. All right, all three are successful. 0 0.729. Everybody okay with that? All right, let's give a prize for 11B. Prize that none of them are successful. Michaela Tanner, do one of you guys want this one? 
Michaela, you want it? Yeah, go for it. Okay, 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1. Exactly right. 0 0.001. Thank you. All right, so that's the probability that all three of them fail in a row, um, which is pretty unusual. Now this one is hard. Oh, Michaela, uh, horn toad, um, crocodile, salamander, snake. Mm, I'll take the crocodile. All right. All right. Um, last one. Find the probability that at least one of the three surgeries is successful. Huh, okay. So at least one of the three surgeries is successful would be, um, this is gonna be hard because, so um, for A, we found out that we had like uh, three successes, right? Three successes in a row. And for B, it was uh, three failures in a row. So we just did failure, 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 or success, success, success. That makes sense? But the problem with this one is this, everybody look up. You could have the first two being successful and then a failure, or you could have a success, a failure, a success, or you could have a failure and then two successes, or you could have two failures and one success, or you could have a failure, success, a failure, or you could have a success, failure, failure, or you could have all of them being successful and all of these would count. Do you see what I mean? What's the only thing that doesn't count? All fails. So what the, it's easier, remember how we talked about yesterday, it's easier sometimes to find the complement of an event to find the opposite. So instead, we already found out the probability that they all fail, which is 0 0.001. So if you just take 100% minus 0 0.001, that's your answer. Now, if we had found out all of these individual probabilities, these seven different probabilities, and then added them all together, they would have made 0.999. All right, that's it. So um, the other half of your homework is right there. Uh, 152, eight through 24 evens and number 32, yeah? Uh, I want you to do three fourths of the whole thing. So if you did the whole first half, then you could do half of this one and it would be okay. Doesn't have to be three fourths of both, I think is what you're asking me, right? Then you can do three fourths of the second one. Okay. Yep. That'll still add up to 75% overall. Okay. So um, if you're all good to go, uh, ladies, you may leave. I hope you have a terrific day. Enjoy being home and not driving in it. I'm still better. I'm gonna settle down. Emily, how's that test going? And Rochester and Winona. Yep. No, but they're also having a distance learning day, which I mean, would be better than driving in it. Although we wouldn't have a distance learning day ever. <laughs>